Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army and the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Silent Bomb. This is the story of the psychological warfare organizations of the United States Army and the United States Air Force. An interesting story of an exciting episode in Korea. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army, you can rest assured that your talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Today, if you're qualified, you can enlist directly for training as a specialist in Army aircraft maintenance. You'll be assigned to duty as a light plane mechanic, helicopter mechanic, or airframe repairman. Why not investigate an Army enlistment and find out just what you stand to gain? Complete information is available at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Silent Bomb. That is a communist machine gun in Korea. It fires to kill. It can be silenced, perhaps, like this, with a hand grenade thrown at close range by an American soldier risking his life. Sergeant, give me another grenade. Here you are, Captain. Here it goes. <laughs> okay, one more grenade will do it. Let's get in there and mop up. Uh-oh. Another commie gun on our flank. Counterattack coming. There's a lot of them, too. Come on, soldier, we got... One gun silenced, but others still alive. Mightn't there be some additional way of silencing not only that one machine gun, but others, a dozen... Some way to double the effectiveness of every American weapon, some new ammunition in the armory of freedom? That's the hard question in the minds of every American fighting man in Korea, and in the minds of those at home. That night, it's the hard question on the lips of an infantry officer we'll call Captain Edwards. It's always the same story in C Sector, Colonel. We knock out one post or two, then a counterattack by the Chinese in tremendous numbers. They're fanatics, Colonel. This report from Regimental G2 might interest you, Captain Edwards. It's about your sector, mm. C Sector. Uh -huh. I'll give you the gist of it. C Sector running between those two ridges is easy for the enemy to hold as long as we don't mount a major assault there. I wish we would. Anyway, according to this report, the communists use C sector to break in fresh troops. You notice how often their units change there? Sure, sure. They're always new. From the enemy point of view, the terrain in C sector is ideal for training, for giving under fire experience to new troops. But there's always so many of them, Colonel. Isn't there something we can do? <laughs> Miles to the north, at the Yalu River dividing Korea from Manchuria. A long convoy of Soviet-built trucks, all loaded with soldiers of the Chinese Communist forces. The men are fresh, the uniforms unsoiled by combat. They're newly trained units heading southward to the battle line. They're headed, in fact, for C Sector. When the 
last of the enemy convoy has crossed the Yalu River Bridge, it's dusk. The trucks pull off the road. The men pile out to pitch camp for the night. Our attention centers on one group of them. The men huddle over their cold rations. Their officer, Lieutenant Chen, approaches them briskly. It's time for the daily indoctrination session, a fixture in all communist units. Comrades! Comrades, we are on the soil of our great ally, the People's Republic of Korea. We come to help them defeat the imperialist aggressors from America, the reactionary exploiters of the masses. We will drive them into the sea for the greater glory of our own people's democracy of China and the glory of our beloved leader, Comrade Mao Zedong. You, uh, Comrade Li. Comrade Lieutenant. You will answer me. Why must we defeat the imperialist aggressors from America? Because they seek only to keep us in colonial status and enslave the masses. You, Comrade Chung, you agree? Yes, but there is another reason, Comrade Lieutenant. What is it? We must defeat the imperialist aggressors because they invaded the People's Republic of Korea to destroy it. Now you, Comrade Chung, you... Say where you are, all of you! Comrade Lieutenant, American plane, they come to close! Without orders, the men scatter for shelter. The Lieutenant glares in fury, then himself hits the ground. The American plane, big, menacing in the darkness, yet hard to spot in the purplish dusk, swoops nearer the encampment, then over it. From its belly drops a bomb, a sure hit on G Company and the platoon of Lieutenant Chen. It arches swiftly toward the ground as the red troops await the inevitable explosion. But high above them, the bomb breaks into bits that scatter without noise. The men stare. The bomb is a dud. But what are the bright-colored leaflets fluttering down? Comrade Lee crawls from behind some rocks for a better look, then takes a few steps closer and laughs. <laughs> Come on! It is a bomb full of paper! <laughs> the men of the platoon crowd round, picking up the leaflets. Comrades, listen! It says, escape! The communists keep the truth from you. They do not dare let your family write you the truth of the death Famine, spying, and slavery, the communists have brought China. Just as your political officer dictates what you may write to your family, communist bosses tell your family what to write to you. It is true. Lieutenant Chen tells us what to write. Listen, he says, do not be tricked by communist lies. Do not fight for those who kill your people at home. Escape. Go home to your family in China. Look, on the leaflet, comrades. A picture of a letter burning. It must be true. You man! You pigs! What are you doing? Comrade Lieutenant, American leaflets were in the bomb. Many, many leaflets. They are poison! Drop them to the ground! They are poison! You will die! Drop them, I tell you! Or you will be shot! <laughs> Frightened faces, suddenly trembling hands. The comrade lieutenant must speak the truth. He has studied at the university. Leaflets flutter to the ground. In a moment, a detail is sweeping them up, carrying them off. But not all of them. When dropped from the air, they scatter in thousands over a wide area. Soon, the men are preparing for sleep. Chong, yes. The American leaflet. You believe it is poison? I know it is not poison. You know? How? I kept one in my pocket. I am not dead. You kept one? You too. I must think about what it said. The command lieutenant will have a shot. I must think about what it said. Because in my village, it was very bad last summer. The government took half the rice. My sister died because they took the medicine for the army. But now my father writes that all things are wonderful. But he does not say how they become wonderful. Perhaps your father does not want you to worry. That is all. Yes, I'm sure that is all. We must not speak of this to the comrade lieutenant. You are right. You are right. G 
Company, 480th Chinese Communist Infantry, waits behind the lines, listens, wonders as all soldiers wonder before entering combat for the first time. They're so intent on the rumble of distant death that they hardly hear the drone of a plane engine above them. A plane! American plane! The men dive for cover. They can only wait for the anti-aircraft artillery as further back. They watch the plane far above them. And then a voice fills the air. A strange voice speaking to them in their own language. Warriors of the 480th DCF Battalion. He speaks to us, John. Listen. Warriors, listen to me. Look about you. Look at your comrades. Many will soon be gone, killed in useless attacks. Why? I'll tell you why. Because Malay and us communists have forced you into this war. Because they care nothing for dead Chinese soldiers. That must be right, John. They cannot care for us. Do not speak this. The Russian communists are greedy only for more power over China and Korea. Brave Chinese soldiers, you have been betrayed. John, cannot be so. The men of China fight on Korean land with all weapons from Soviet Russia. That is truly. Our, our guns are Russian. You men! The command lieutenant. You men! Why do you listen? Fire your gun! Why? Fire your gun! Look at your comrades. Many will soon be gone, killed in useless attacks. Why? I will tell you why. Because my own company, Russian communists, have forced you into this war. <laughs> Comrade soldiers, you must help me. A voice spoke to us from the American plane. I did not hear all that was said. Perhaps some of you heard it all and will tell me. It is your duty to tell me. You, Comrade Sung, did you hear? Yes, Comrade Lieutenant, I hear. And you, Comrade Lee. I, uh, I did not hear, Comrade Lieutenant. I did not. The rest of you, did any of you hear all that was said by the plane? Yes, yes, yes. yes sir. Now, my orders. Sung, Selin, you three on the end, and you, Che. You have forgotten all that you have been taught, all that I've told you. You must know better than to listen to American lies and remember them. Now I cannot trust you to fight well. Your own comrades cannot trust you. You are to be shot now. But you merely be sent back to the rear for more training. And then we will see. Six men of the platoon step back and are soon on their way to the rear. Unstable elements tricked into revealing what they had heard while others kept their mouths shut. Six communists from one platoon, two dozen from the company, more dozens from the entire battalion, no longer to be trusted by their bosses with guns. The first casualties of the T-bomb, the truth weapon carried to the enemy in Korea to weaken his morale, to make ideas help bullets. Command post, Colonel Stover. This is Captain Edwards, sir, C Sector. I've got news for you. Yes, Captain. One of my patrols came back with information that the commie outfit in front of us may be moving out soon. Yes, we know, Captain. The 480th Battalion is coming in opposite you tomorrow. Well, that means an attack soon. I hope we'll have some real artillery support, sir. Captain, I promise you some very unusual artillery support. You'll have everything you want and some more, too. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Silent Bomb. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. If you received your sheepskin this year, here's an important message for you young fellows. You're in luck if you've studied math, physics, electricity, or metal work, because you can now enlist directly as an Army aviation mechanic. 
You'll work with blueprints, precision tools, electricity, sheet metal, and internal combustion engines. It's all for Army aircraft, too, you know. The Army uses planes and helicopters for observation and transportation. You taxi the aircraft for testing, and you'd go along with the pilot on check flights. Sound like a good job? Well, brother, it is. And now you can enlist directly as an Army aviation mechanic. Just go to your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station for details. If you're qualified, you're in. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Silent Bomb. moment before dawn in the Korean ridges. It's cold and weirdly dark when training and discipline must fortify courage as at no other time. On the communist side, Lieutenant Chen moves among his awakened men. Comrades, our first attack against the Americans. Remember, Comrade Mao Zedong's eye is upon each one of us. Your orders are quiet until we are upon them. Then kill. Kill! On the American side, the attack expected. Wary men peer into the strange gloom. Ears straining for the telltale clink of equipment, for the shrill and frightening yells of communist attackers. Then suddenly... Captain, there they are. Pass the word. Fire at will. As the sun breaks the horizon, steel and fire rake sea sector. Machine guns and rifles spray lead into the assaulting groups that now spring up yelling, dashing forward or crumpling up to lie still. Hello, Colonel. We need that artillery. In a matter of seconds, from behind the American lines, the bigger guns begin to roar, their shells landing among the attackers with pinpoint precision. Others in the communist positions where reserves are waiting. rages for three hours. Sergeant, how are we doing on the right flank? We lost the third one for a while, Captain, but we got it back. Attack's over, Captain. They're going back. You will go back to rest, comrades. You have done honor to the People's Republic. Many were killed, eh? Did you see that some of our comrades surrendered? Do not let the comrade lieutenant hear you. He has gone out to the headquarters. Look, Chang, leaflets are all over the ground. It is strange. They did not come from plane as before. Ah, that is what they were saying. The reserve men as they came up. The leaflets came this time in artillery shells. Americans are clever. Let us see what leaflets say. Ah. Brave Chinese warriors. Why fight for Russian communists? Why be killed? You are only a substitute for a Russian communist soldier. Why not save yourself for your family? Surrender. Not so now, John. Others are reading too. See, on the back, a picture. Yes. Corporal Tsung Tao Pei, 4th Root Army, 49th Infantry Division, surrendered in the useless attacks of October and November, now a prisoner in American hands. See how well fed and happy he is, and how safe. He will not be killed as a substitute for a Russian communist. We do not kill or torture our prisoners. And here. On the bottom, what does it say? This leaflet is a safe conduct pass. Give it to any American soldier and you will not be hurt. I promise you this myself. Signed by the general commanding all the Americans. It is treason for us to read this, John. I still think of the letters of my father and of the death of my sister and about the Soviets and why we die for them. John, no, no, no. Please, do not talk in that way. You are right. Not now. But tonight. Tonight we may speak of it again. Uh, why 
quiet night tonight, Captain. Well, you've got it coming. That was rough this morning. Yes, sir, it was. Quiet. You hear something out there? A step, maybe. Kind of slithering. Call me patrol. Night attack, maybe. A step or two again. You give me that phone. American! American! A commie out there, Captain. What do you want? American. I am China soldier. I want to talk. I have paper from General. Sergeant. Right here, sir. Risk him. Right. Uh, clean as a whistle, Captain. He's got a piece of paper. Surrender. Say surrender on paper by General. Yes, yes, I see. Come to outside in artillery shell. Many, many. You want to surrender? Me, yes. And more. Others. More like me back there. Others want to surrender? I think many. No like fight today. No, no like. I must have papers. You only have one, this one? A comrade lieutenant very angry about papers. Always angry about papers. He see he order everybody clean up papers, give to him. Only I keep. Oh. And you want more? Yes, yes, more papers. And you want to go back? Yes. Go back for comrades. Come back here. Many, many. How many? Oh, ten, five, more. Maybe more. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Call Colonel Stover. Tell him we need leaflets. Get him here as soon as you can. I guess this was the unusual artillery support he was talking about. Well, we'll see. <laughs> are back alive. Yes. And the Americans? Big. Fine. They give me papers. One for you. Ah. And you others. You will take leaflets too. Hey, yes. I give him to you. We go together. It is better to go together. Yes. We must show it is not a trick that we do not want to die for Soviets. All right, soldiers. Lieutenant Chen. It is night. Why do you talk? What do you discuss? We uh, discuss an attack of yesterday. Comrade Lieutenant, we, we now good soldiers of People's Republic. What are these papers? Huh? Enemy propaganda. What do you do with them? Oh, we read them, Comrade Lieutenant, to laugh. To laugh? You're right. Yesterday I corrected all that we hear. Where did you get this? We uh, found them, Comrade Lieutenant. Found them? You lie again, you traitors. You kept them. You kept them away from me. You traitors to the people. I should teach you a lesson. One of you should die now to teach the rest of you what a traitor deserves from the People's Republic. Chung, Li, the rest of you, bury him. No, no, you murderer. Get back. Comrades. I go to surrender! Follow me! Help, you traitors! Sergeant! Sergeant, you will shoot! Hear that firing, Captain? It's on the Chinese line across the valley. Some uh, patrols got tangled up? No patrols of ours out. Not that far, anyway. See if you can get the colonel on the phone. Yes, sir. Command post, Captain Edwards here. Yeah. Captain Edwards anxious to talk Colonel Stover, please. He's coming, Captain. A lot of shooting over there. The Colonel, sir. Oh, thanks. Colonel Stover. Yes, Edward. There's firing in C sector, sir, directly opposite us. I'm calling to ask if any other units of ours are making an attack. No, none, Captain. I hear some firing very faintly. We wondered what it was. It's only a few minutes till daylight. Maybe we can get a reconnaissance plane to fly over. Yes, sir. And we'll watch from here. Sun just peeking up, sir. From every American bunker in C sector, anxious eyes stare across the little valley toward the communist position. As the sun lights the scene, they see Chinese fighting with Chinese, bitter hand-to-hand -hand struggles. Then more and more of them breaking up and men running frantically toward the American positions. Rifles crack behind them. Some stumble and sprawl. Others come on waving leaflets in their hands. Please, please, I have papers. My comrades, come. Do not shoot you. Your general promised. Hello, it's our old pal. A 
What's happening over there? Help my comrades. Some want to come here. Others know. They fight. Others surrendering up and down the line. They do not want to die for Russia. Help them. Sergeant, this is our chance to take the commie position. Pass the word. Attack. Prisoners filter through the line. 10, 20, 30 and more. Others die on their way to freedom. Still others in the communist bunkers fight with fanatics who try to make them stay. Captain Edwards's men, virtually ignored by the communists, sweep across the valley and before the defenders know it, are in and among the enemy battalion. Willing prisoners are taken and others less willing. Later they will be separated from each other. Well, Colonel, we've occupied their position and cleaned it out. Good work, Captain. Any prisoners? About 175, as near as we can figure. That fight amongst them, that was a lucky accident. Accident nothing, Captain. We started working on those fellows from the moment they crossed the yellow. The truth bomb that did its work that day goes right on doing it, sapping the strength of the communist armies adding hundreds of prisoners or defectors to their immense battle losses. But the T-bomb is not and cannot be a substitute for bullets. It is another support weapon. For an integral part of what makes surrender or defection attractive to the slave soldiers of communism is the fear of deadly weapons on the side of freedom. The greater that fear, the greater the effectiveness of democracy's message. Proudly we hail the psychological warfare organizations of the United States Army and the United States Air Force that may double the wallop of every American bullet and cut the enemy's effectiveness in half. It's time for a break. If you think the breaks haven't been coming your way, just listen to this. The Army's offering you a break if you're qualified for the job. You can now enlist directly in the Army as an aviation mechanic. I know that's good news for a lot of you young fellows who are handy with tools, but that isn't all. You'll begin to serve right then as an Army specialist. You might even earn a pilot or crew chief rating. Now, how's that for a break? And it's all because the Army's expanding its light plane and helicopter program. Now, if you're one of those smart young fellows who never pass up a break, here's your chance. Just go ask them down at your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now as an aviation mechanic in your United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>